Uh, so my first, my first uh, passion was to be a conductor. But when I became a high school band director, I realized that if I wanted to conduct a great school band or any great band, that I'd have to have great players. Therefore, I had to become a great teacher. And fortunately, the first two years that I taught, I did not, I was not responsible for a band. I only taught lessons. Therefore, I could concentrate on becoming a teacher. And so I studied all the instruments. Uh, and I think I got to be a really quite good teacher. Um, so, uh, you know, I, that, that was, first of all, almost, I wanted to do it because I wanted to conduct a great band. But as I did it, I fell in love with it. I love teaching. I, I, it gives me such great satisfaction and fulfillment to teach and to help people. Um, so what turned out to be something for my own, uh, when, something I wanted, it turned into something that uh, was a passion for teaching. Hmm. Um, Frank, you had taught since 1953, is that right? That's when I started to teach, yes. Yes. Um, and I'm wondering, out of all your years that you taught, what are you most proud of professionally? I'm most proud of all the people who are now 50 and 60 years old that played in my high school band and who still play and make music, go to concerts. And I know that there's a lot of them because we had a reunion in 2006. About 450 kids came back. We did a poll. 75% of them were still involved in music. In other words, I made them music lovers. See, that's what I think the purpose of music education is, is to create people who love music, not love the activity of it, but find in it something that is fulfilling, that allows them to feel things and experiencing things that are beyond what they can uh, deal with in the, in the, in the real world quote, real word, the, yeah, the physical world. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, uh, that's what I'm really proud of. That's, that's, the, that's the bullseye. That's the one that I want to do. I, I don't, I mean, I want them to love the band that I'm conducting and they do, but more important, I want them to fall in love with music so that, and, and we don't know whether we succeed or not, because when they're with us, they're captive. The only way we can tell if we are influencing them is to find out what they're doing when they're not with us, how they choose to use their time, how they choose to use their money. Do they go to concerts? Do they buy recordings? What do they buy? What do they read? That tells us whether we have been successful. So would you say... Um that when you when a student goes on that they they move from student to friend has that happened for you oh yes definitely in fact all during the pan pandemic every single month i've had a zoom meeting with ex members of my high school band it happens every month that's great yeah oh it's fantastic by the way um the, when I was a high school band director, I realized that I, 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 was, I was interested. Am I affecting them? Am I influencing them? So I took a manila folder, uh, stapled in some blank sheets, put the name of every single student on each one of them, and told them that I wanted them to tell me what they did when they were work with me. I wanted to know what they were doing when they had choices that gave me insights into whether I was having any influence. They would write in, I'd collect them every weekend, write little notes to them, pass them back. So we had this kind of thing going on that basis in which I was gaining insight into what they 
they're doing outside when they had choices, what were they choosing to do? Mm-hmm. That gave me, well, maybe I'm influencing that person. That person decided to go to a, hear the Cleveland Orchestra at Bailey Hall at Cornell. That, that, maybe I had something to do with it. I don't know. Frank, what what do you what what's on your list of things to do that you haven't done yet that you want to accomplish? Well, wow, that's a good question. Uh, um, uh, well, I'd like to commission every great composer in the world to write a piece. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how many commissions you've done? Yeah, I, I, I. It's it's well over. It's probably somewhere between sixty and seventy. Wow. And I mean, you know, and they're, they're, you know, they're Pulitzer Prize winning composers and Grebmeyer winning composers. They're, you see, I, I really think that we are what we consume. And so if we consume good stuff, if we consume high quality, I mean, an English literature teacher selects the best, the books written by the best authors in the English language. We should try to offer our students the best things created by the best offers in the musical language. And so that's why it's so important to do something about the literature from the elementary school to the high school. I mean, I I guess if I had a lot of money now, I would try to interest uh, great composers to write for young bands. Hmm. Hmm. Because you are what you consume. I mean, if I read, you know, if I read uh, classical comics uh, that don't challenge my intellect, that doesn't challenge me too emotionally, in other words, doesn't make me think, make me, I have to, I have to, I have to commit myself to wanting to discover. That's what great music does. It's not, it, it's not like the sun where you just sit on it and, and you, you feel it. That's what entertainment music is. Classical music demands something of you, but the reward is incredible. 